Hey, hey, everybody, how's it going? It's me, your guy Waddles. Welcome to another snapshot video. They actually did it. Who would have thought that the Nether update would actually be the Minecraft 1.16 Aether update? Wait, what's that? You said that's just another portal behind Glowstone? No, stop lying to me. Stop. That's not reality. This is reality. This is definitely the Aether dimension. Take a look at it. This crazy. It's really cool. And look at that, a mine shaft below the Aether 2. Who would have known? Wow. That's amazing. Uh, okay, maybe it was a lie. Maybe YouTuber lied to you. It's not actually the Aether Dimension. It's something else. The 20W21A snapshot released on May 20th, 2020. If you look at the calendar, that's today. Hey, that's pretty cool. This snapshot is actually kind of a bigger snapshot. There have been a lot of bug fixes and minor changes in the snapshot, but there has also been the addition of a brand new world customization setting tool toggle thing. It's cool. Did I? This video we're gonna dive into everything 20w 21a you know the deal if you enjoy the snapshot showcases help me out help the videos out by dropping a like and if you haven't subscribed yet now's your chance the only chance you'll ever have you should change that and definitely hit the bell as well as always all of the links are down in the description 500k club merch and special coming soon so, the 20W21A snapshot. In terms of a snapshot size, it's not as small as last week's snapshot, but it's also not some gigantic snapshot. In this week's snapshot, there have been some changes to piglins, some changes to the basalt delta biome, some lily pad changes, redstone changes, and a few other minor changes. There has also been the addition of a brand new world customization creation setting. It's really, really cool. But let's actually go ahead and start today's breakdown with redstone. This is a change that I think a lot of people are going to be happy with. So take a look at the redstone dust. It's just redstone dust. That's how it looks when you place it down now. But as of the snapshot, players will be able to turn the redstone cross back into the redstone dot. All by just pressing the use button on the thing. Now these two different forms of redstone actually do behave a little bit differently as well, which is pretty interesting. So take a look at this. Over here we have a cross redstone. If we power the block that the redstone is sitting on, all of those lamps are powered. Over here we have a dot redstone. If we power this, only the lamp directly above the lever is powered because of the lever. Basically, that dot doesn't power any of the blocks around it. But if we were to get up close with the dot and change it into a cross, everything gets powered. And then we change it back, everything is unpowered. Change it back, you, you, you get it, you, you can see what's going on here. An earlier Minecraft 1.16 snapshot made some changes to redstone for the better. Basically, as of that snapshot, if it looks like redstone should power something, it powers something, and that's exactly why the cross redstone powers blocks near it, whereas the dot one doesn't. But in terms of redstone for this week, that's actually it. That is the entire change. It's pretty small, actually, but it's also pretty big at the same time. This was a change that a lot of people in the community were asking for, and thankfully, we have amazing developers. They actually listen to the community. Big shout out, developers. This week, we have a very minor change to, of all things, the lily pad. If you AFK fish a lot, this change is the change for you. You're going to be excited about this one. Uh, okay, maybe not. The lily pad is now considered a junk item instead of a treasure item. You know when you fish and you catch a bow, that bow would be treasure. Before this snapshot, if you caught a lily pad, well then good news, you also would have caught a treasure item. Um, didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Lily pads are kind of more on the junk side of things for sure. All right, big, big test. Is the nether portal gonna work in this dimension? Um, yes, yes it does. Okay, perfect, perfect. This is great for the next part of the video. The next few changes are definitely a whole lot more nethery. As of the snapshot, if you give a piglin gold, it's not meant to walk around while admiring the gold piglin. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're breaking the snapshot. That's, that wasn't meant to happen. If you give the piglin gold, it should not walk around while admiring it. Just like that. Now, if we take the piglin out while it was admiring the gold, the ingot just goes away. Take a look at that ingot. It's gone. It was all for nothing. It seems like that whole wandering while admiring feature change thing, it's a little buggy still because that piglin, it's definitely on the move while admiring the gold still. Can you even see where you're going, my guy? You should probably stand still and stare at that. Aha, much better. Welcome to the Basalt Delta Biome, the home of the next change. The spawn rate of ores has been increased within the Basalt Delta Biome. This is basically to balance out the decreased amount of netherrack that generates in this biome. Less netherrack, less ores, at least before the snapshot. 
As of the snapshot, ores like quartz and nether gold ore should spawn a little bit more frequently in the basalt delta biome. Now, does that make the basalt delta biome your ideal mining location? Uh, probably not. I think this is more of just a balance to offset the decreased amount of netherrack that generates in this biome, like I said. Netherrack is where ores usually generate. This past Sunday, May 17th, Minecraft turned 11 years old. In celebration of Minecraft's brand new birthday, take a look at this brand new logo that Mojang revealed. That right there, that's the new way to do things, at least when it comes to the logo of Mojang. What I'm saying here is Mojang has a new logo, and it's now in Minecraft as of the snapshot. If you want to check out the logo, press F3 and T, it'll reload your resource pack, and you'll get a little flash of the logo. When you open up the game, when it's loading, you'll also see that brand new logo and brand new loading screen. Now, finally, the big one, the big change. Take a look at this world right here. Okay, well, there's not much to it, but it's definitely different. You have to give the world that. This week, custom worlds have been re-added into Minecraft. This is a feature that went away a long time ago, and a lot of people were sad about it. Thankfully, it has been brought back, at least partially, in this week's snapshot. Now, before I dive into the feature, show you guys it, I'd like to say that it's uh, still being worked on. There's a lot of changes being made to it. It's very experimental as of this point, so maybe wait another week or two to jump into a custom world survival world, because it would definitely be big bummer if you try and slide into your custom world next week, and plot twist, it just doesn't work. So anyway, sliding over to the create new world menu to check out this change. So, this menu actually looks a little bit different than it did last week. That's because of this allow cheats toggle. This toggle has been placed right here. Feels a little unbalanced right now. I have a feeling this is going to change again in the future. But anyways, the toggle that we're looking for is inside of more world options. If we go in there and then go over to the world type default toggle and then start clicking, things are going to change. At first we get super flat. That's normal. Then we get large biomes. Then we get amplified. Then we get single biome. This was buffet before. Then caves, which is brand new. And finally, floating islands, which is what we were just in. Now we're going to actually go ahead and go back to the floating islands biome, but it's not going to be a mushroom floating island this time. Let's go ahead and make it something a little bit more interesting. Let's see. What do we have? Well, of course, we have every single biome in Minecraft. Aha, uh -huh, you see how that works. So if you've always wanted a floating island that is a war motion, this is the one for you. Let's go ahead and flip things into creative mode and check out our floating island warm ocean world. How is this going to work? Not a clue at all. This should either A, crash the game, or B, just be a beach. Huh? <laughs> this is the least exciting, most underwhelming warm ocean island I have ever seen, elites. That is terrible. We need a new world. I'm not I'm not doing that. We try it again. This time we'll go with caves just to see what it is. So let's say maybe we get I don't know, a basalt delta cave biome. That sounds like it could be pretty cool. I already set things over into creative mode so we can check things out. Now, is this entire world going to be caves? That's what I'd like to find out because I have not checked out the caves generation quite yet. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 This is amazing. Look at this place. It looks like we're straight up in the nether in this place. I see what they mean by caves. It means that there's blocks above us instead of the sky. Wow. That is really evil looking and really really awesome looking this straight up has nether vibes written all over it but a uh, big question if we flip into spectator mode what is above the ceiling that's what we all need to know okay nothing <laughs> okay okay so it's pretty much like the nether it, it's, it's very much the nether but like with the sun over there okay cool if I'd have known that was going to pretty much create the nether, though, I wouldn't have chosen a nether biome. This time, we have something a little bit more normal. The sunflower plains biome that is apparently going to be insanely, insanely dark. And take a look at that. We actually have some netherrack in there. So it looks like this is just using nether generation currently. Now, is there going to be anything to take a look at in this biome? Probably not. Uh, well, kind of, kind of. We have a like nether mine shaft, nether cave systems, a gigantic lava ocean still. That's definitely good for the sunflower. That's 100% safe. <laughs> okay, uh, very interesting though. This change is actually really cool. Right off the bat, I can think of a lot of cool custom survival challenges using this world type, or even just cool survival worlds. I mean, we have a floating island here. If I would have made this like a forest or a plains biome, we could literally have just a peaceful floating island.
Now obviously this change throws me back to the 20W14 Infinite Snapshot. I feel like that snapshot was a little bit of a tease when it comes to this feature at least. Would we have ever known? Definitely not, but it was probably Mojang messing around with things, testing things out. But that actually does it for the custom world type. In terms of other changes, we have one more technical change. We have a new syntax when it comes to the spread players command. The syntax deals with height. The syntax is max height. It allows you to control the maximum height of the players that you're spreading with that command. And then of course, in the 20W21A snapshot, there have been plenty of bug fixes as well. Now again, I'd like to put another disclaimer out there. The custom world stuff is all still very experimental. Don't jump into anything too big this week. Maybe wait until next week just to make sure things are a little more polished, a little more smoothed out. Just be careful, elites. But that's all I have for the 20W21A snapshot. If you enjoyed this one, do me a favor, drop a like, subscribe. All of my links are down in the description below. Check them out. Drop a follow on my Twitter for sure. Today, I'd like to send a big shout out to my patrons, Pick Death 2 and Gary Late. Thank you both so much for the support. Thank you all for watching. And until tomorrow, stay cool, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.